God bless you all. I have something serious to talk with you tonight about. And I want to start with Matthew 5.10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know this. You've preached this. What does this mean to me? Well, first of all, I hope heaven can wait right now. Because we have an election. And you have a choice. And the choice is Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, or sitting home. And you think that's three choices, but it's only two. Because if you sit home, that's a vote for Kamala Harris. You know this. Now, let me tell you, some of you know my story, some of you don't. But a little while ago, I was on the stage of the Republican National Convention nominating President Trump. That very morning, I had gotten out of prison. And I said to folks, I went to prison so you won't have to. And what I meant by that is that I found myself in prison. I found myself persecuted. I don't know if it was righteous, but it was for doing the right thing. It was for standing up to the, for the Constitution, standing up for this country, standing up for my oath of office. That's what I stood up for, and thank you for standing up for me now. And I want to say, my beautiful fiance Bonnie, somewhere here, I want everybody to know that she did the time with me and thank God for her, because she and God helped me through that. Give her a hand. Now, here's what you have to know. I went to prison at the hands of a weaponized justice system and everyone involved in my incarceration, every single one was a Democrat. Everyone. The Congress who voted to hold me in contempt. Merrick Garland, the Attorney General, who prosecuted me. Ahmed Mehta, the judge who was appointed by Obama, and the jury itself in the District of Columbia, all 12. Democrats. Now, why does that matter? It's because the Democrats are waging a war against you. Do you know this? Do you feel this? There are people in prison right now because they're Christians, because all they did was peacefully engage in activity consistent with their Christian values, and they put them in prison just like they put me in prison. If I wake up on November 6th, the day after the election, and I read two things, it's going to hurt my heart. If I read that Kamala Harris won this race, and if I read that Christians did not vote, That's going to hurt not just me, but you and this country. Do you hear me? And so I'm going to leave you with a mission. I'm going to leave you with a mission, because this election 
is going to be decided by a few hundred thousand votes across five or six states, and this state right here in North Carolina is going to be one of them. Here is your mission. I hope you will accept this. I need you. I need you to vote. And I need you to go to the polls before Election Day. Because they will try on Election Day to keep you home. Do you understand? We've seen this movie. And I need you to do one more thing. Please promise me this. Please pray on this. I need you to find 10 other people friends, colleagues, fellow parishioners, and make sure they get to the polls as well. Can you do that for me? Can you do that for me? If you are a pastor in this audience, I need you from the pulpit to get not 10, but 100 or 1,000. Can you hear me? Will you do that? This is your mission. God bless all of you. You're going to see two of the greatest men I ever met in Washington tonight. Ben Carson and Donald Trump. They have your back. Please have theirs. Thank you. Good night.